Many years ago now, when my mother was just 50 years old, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor that was lodged in the center of her brain. I need not tell you it was a radical interruption in the life of a family that had known relatively smooth sailing up to that point. And my mother had been very faithful, very strong, very confident in God. And the morning of her surgery, we gathered in New York University Hospital in Manhattan. And it was just my father, myself, and my brother. And we're in the room with my mother, and two orderlies came one with an electric razor and the other a can of Nair hair remover, and they were to prep my mother for the surgery. So we were asked to leave, and when we went back into the room, there in the bed sat my now hairless mother for the first time in tears since this whole ordeal had begun. And of course, my father and my brother looked at me, the priest's son, as if I was to know what to do. And so I decided it was my job to theologically shore up my mother. So I knelt down by her bed and I said, you know, mother, you've been very strong up to this point. You've been confident in God. You have to believe God's going to see you through this. And she stopped crying and she looked at me and she said, Edward, I know all of that. And I said, but, but you're so upset. You have not been this upset since we found out about this tumor. And she said to me, I just paid $50 for that permanent. <laughs> And we all laughed. But you know that the laughter in that hospital room that morning was holy? And that is when the real healing began. Because the holiness of my mother was uncovered for all of us to see. My father and brother, they weren't so sure God would see her through this. I, the priest's son, I wasn't so sure. But my mother was so rooted in this deep faith that the real healing began before the operation, before the cure. A lot of times, I think, we tend to equate cure and healing. So if we're sick, or someone we love is sick, we pray for a cure. And a cure means we're going to go back to be physically like we were before the illness. But I don't really think we should be praying for a cure. I think what we really want to pray for is healing because healing is on a much deeper level. Healing means I begin to realize who I love in my life, what's important in my life. Healing means that I come to peace with whatever God sends me. The healing of Peter's mother-in-law by Jesus isn't just a physical healing. She then serves Jesus. And it doesn't mean she goes out and gets tea and crumpets for Jesus. It means now she recognizes this is the Lord and Savior. Her life is changed by the healing, the cure and the healing go together. I know the story of this man named John Graham who was diagnosed with cancer and he was told he was terminal. And when he heard the news he was going to die, everything in his life changed. He began to do none of the things that were unimportant, that weren't essential. And he began to focus on all the things that really mattered in his life. He reconnected with a kid that he hadn't talked to in six years. He began to do things that he really thought gave him life and gave him love. Well, you know what happened? The doctors told him that they had made a mistake, that he wasn't going to die, that he actually was going to be cured. Do you know that I heard when he heard that he cried because he was afraid that now he knew he wasn't going to die, he'd go back to being the person he was before he thought he was terminal. You see, the healing began even though the cure was not yet there. And so some of you who are watching this, listening, you may be sick right now. You may be in a hospital or a nursing home, homebound, and you're praying for a cure. I want to get well again, Lord. Well, maybe you will be blessed with that cure. But far more important is that we all be healed, that we be reconnected to what really matters in our lives, that we trust that Jesus too touches our hand. And whether or not we can walk again once Jesus does, we can connect with one another, with our loved ones, our family members. My mother taught me that a long time ago. My brother, my father, and I came together as a result of that brain tumor in a way that we never would have without it. That's when the true healing began. May we pray that God continues in his love to heal each one of us.